So this here is going to be a video on how to paint a Plague Burst Crawler. Now we actually have three to paint, so as you watch the video you'll see uh, three different models on the go. But this is the final product and uh, we're pretty happy with the way it turned out. Uh, we used all GW paints, so I was having a hard time finding a video that only used GW paints and didn't wander into airbrushes. Uh, this is all done with brushes itself. And uh, so if you want to paint something staying loyal to GW colors, uh, please feel free to stay tuned and I'll show you how we painted this guy up to look the way he does here. Uh, otherwise than that, please feel free to leave a comment, leave a like on the channel and subscribe and we will uh, see you in a few moments when we start our painting video. Cheers! So this here is a video on how to paint the Plague Burst Crawlers and we actually have three to do. There's two on screen now, and if we just tilt over sideways just a little bit, you'll see there's a third one. So, we first base coated these. We based them with Wraithbone Spray. And then on the other one, we based it with Mechanicus Standard Gray. Uh, I wasn't sure which one would be better, so I kind of did one of each just to see if it made any difference. I don't think it's going to in the end because everything's darker than that. But it gave us a good base coat to help the paint stick on better. So from there, we'll move on to our next color and we'll go from here. So our first color we're going to use is gonna be Death Guard Green, which is a base color. And what we're gonna do is very, uh, very, very watered down with a thin coat. We're gonna do all of these areas here, all of the armor, all of the front canopy, carapace, most of the front, uh, hood scoop, the other side, as well as the bottom, and we're going to do all that with a very watered down Death Guard Green, and then we'll kind of move from there. So with our thick base paint that you see here, it's very, very thick. We do want that much more watery than that, we want it much more easily flowing. So we're going to mix that with a lot of uh, medium or water, whatever you so choose. So it's very, very runny as you can see here. and much more thin because when you're covering these large uh, open panels here, like this, this scoop, you want to not leave strokes. So now we're gonna take that watered down Death Guard Green and we're just gonna add our base coat to it. And you see how thin that is. We want the coverage, but we don't wanna leave brush strokes. And we are going to put a second coat on it to hide any of the bare spots that we do. It would have been better to prime it with the Death Guard, Death Guard Green spray paint. Um, but in Canada that's not available. Although in the US you can still get it. So we're just going to keep putting our very light coat on. Doesn't matter how neat and tidy you are. Because it's our base layer of our main armor. And we're going to clean everything up after that. So this is what we look like now that we finished our first coat of Death Guard Green. And as you can see, we haven't left a lot of brush strokes, but we have laid a lot of bare spaces. Because as we brushed, it didn't go on super evenly. It was very thin and it pooled. Similar to a contrast paint, it's, it's very watery. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add the second coat. Which is just watered down identically to the first one. And this should double up the color. And create a nice uniform layer of paint now. Just like that. So we'll do the rest of this and the other three models. And we'll meet back here in a few minutes. And hopefully the difference between the gray and the white base will disappear as we get enough green paint on there. So we'll do that now and we'll be back here in a moment. So here we are now that we finished our Death Guard green and there is no difference in the final color between the two tanks. That said, the lighter base color actually needed a third layer on it to really bring out that green, whereas the gray one uh, did not. So if you're not gonna prime with Death Guard green spray, I would definitely use a darker, um, base color, a gray or a black, 
over the, um, the lighter color white. So with our green finished, we're going to move on from there to our next color. Now for our next color, we're going to want to bring out some of those colors and those, those details on that green. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of Nurgling green and we're going to dry brush that just sort of all over the tank just to add a, a little bit of depth to those two colors. So we've got a much larger brush this time and we're just going to dry brush that like so right across all the areas on our tank. Just adding that nice ridge there that you can see uh, and bringing out a little bit of detail. So we're going to do that for pretty much all three tanks and we'll be back here in a few moments. If you look at the backs of both, you can definitely see there's an edge highlight um, on all of the edges here, along the edges, on the back designs, on the gun, on the uh, mortars, and all along the edges here which are not present on this other tank. So here are our two crawlers now that we're finished with our Nurgling Green dry brush. So now what we're going to do is move on to our next color and we're going to start doing the metallics in the, on, the, uh, on the units. So we're going to start with some lead belcher. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to start with uh, mortar as well as the uh, the uh, supports, a lot of the gears that are in here, all of the tracks, all of the machinery inside of the uh, wheel wells, as well as the chains and the armor dangling here, uh, some parts of the gun, the um, spikes on the front of the prow, as well as the two supports for the uh, dozer scoop here. Same thing on the other side. So we're going to do all of that with lead belcher. And in this instance, it's just a simple paint job. So we're just going to use some of our detail brush here and just start going at all of the machinery inside with our lead belcher. Just like so. This is our crawler now that we finished with the metallics. And as you can see, we did all of the gear here, all of the tracks, the mortar, some of the gears on the uh, controls for the mortar. We did the plague spurters as well as the spikes in the front and the two um, mounts for the dozer blade. So we finished this one because he's magnetized. We also finished the two entropy cannons as far as the metallics go. Just like so. So the next color we're going to use is going to be Balthazar Gold. And what we're going to do now is the same way we did our lead belcher. We're just going to take a little bit and go over all of the trim. So we're going to do this front piece here, these two big wheels, these three wheels on the back, the uh, frame around the mortar as well as the top ring around the top, all of the trim around the dozer blade as well as the trim around the um, scoop bracket. And then there's a piece of armor here that has trim. So we'll do that. We're also going to do a lot of the detail in and inside all of these wheels and add a little bit more color into this area just to uh, mix it up a bit. So the next thing we're going to do now that all our um, brass is finished, at least the base coat, is we're going to take a base coat of Zandri Dust and with a little detail brush, we're just going to pick out the three little skulls here, as well as the uh, bug design that's on the side of each of the, the uh, I guess, the sponsons. And effectively, all we're doing is taking a little bit of water down. And we're just coloring these skulls right here. Like so. So we'll do the other ones. We'll do the bug design on the side. And then we'll meet back here once those are done. So the next base color we're going to do is take a little bit of Bugman's Glow. 
and we're going to do just the cabling here. So just this area as well as these cables back here just to um, sort of add some fleshy bits to that. So we'll just do that along there with our Bugman's Glow. We'll be back here in a few minutes um, when that's all done. Um, but we did finish off the Bugman's Glow and the cabling both here and there and the connector pipes as well. So that finishes off um, the tubing. So with the um, finishing of the Bugman's Glow and the lead belcher, what we're going to do now is start our shade. So we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and we're going to comfortably put it on all over the model. And that plan is to help dirty it up and make it more death guard. We could leave it just the way it is now and it's perfectly fine, but we want to make this a lot more grimy. So first we're going to take it right out of the pot and put a good thick dark layer over the front scoop hood since that's going to pick up the most dirt and grime. Just like so. Trying to make sure we keep along the trim so it fills in the, high, the cracks along there and allowing it to pool down at the bottom where the grime would definitely collect more of. So we're going to do that there. And we're probably going to put most of the direct stuff straight onto the brass. And then on the green, I think what we'll do is water it down a little so it doesn't pool as much, but we still want it green for sure. So on the green, we'll probably put it at a one-to-one -one ratio. But we're definitely going to leave it like that. As you can see, it makes the, the brass much more darker, more inconsistent, more dirtier. So we'll do that there, and then we'll come back with a watered-down version. To sort of brush over the green similar to this. So something like so that. With our watered down shade, we're just going to do panel by panel. Filling in all of the details here, but spreading it as thin as we can so it's not as obvious and doesn't leave strokes. And the gold trim all has the dark patches and such on it. We may even put a second coat on the brass here at the dozer blade. So this is our tank out of the shade is finished. <coughs> and as you can see, we've dirtied up the front with a second coat. We've hit all the skulls and filled in all of the eye sockets. We've done the dozer blade again, and it's filled in all of the pustules and rust spots. Now that our shade is dry, we're gonna take a little bit of Newell oil and we're going to go over all of the gears and the metal metallics in the machinery again uh, just to bring those and make those a little bit darker. So using it straight from the pot, we're just going to add more oil and grime to each of these metallics going over where the earth shade was done earlier just to make it that much darker. And then we're going to do the front dozer blades, just the metal prongs, one more time. So this is our plate burst crawlers now that the shade is done. And as you can see, we've really dirtied up the uh, front scoop as well as all of the sides. We've grimed all inside, as we showed earlier. So the next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of Nurgling Green, which we used already as a highlight, and we're gonna take our dry brush, and we're just going to lightly 
dust over the high spots again, just to bring that Nurgling Green back out again just a little bit. And then we're just going to lightly dust those high points there, just to light that back up one more time. Just like so. So we'll do that for the other models here and we'll be back here in a few minutes. So this is our tank now that we've finished with the highlight, the Nurgle Green Dry Brush. So what we're gonna do now is focus on some of these uh, little pustule boil rust spots here. So we need a lighter color, a khaki type color. I don't have one. The best I've got is an Ungar Flesh. So we're gonna try that out just to see. We're gonna go really, really light because it really doesn't match the other colors that we have. But we're just going to lightly dry brush that area. So it's coming slowly as you can see. So we're going to do that spot a little brighter these two spots here and here we may dry brush that crack but i'm not sure so we'll do that and we'll see, meet back here and see what it looks like so this is our plague burst crawlers now that we're finished with our ungar flesh and as you can see we've really made the little boil stand out and we've done it for all three of our units here so we've done it for those two plus this third one over here and as you can see they all look pretty much the same. So now we're gonna move on to another color that we have. And what we're gonna do is take a little bit of Rune Fang Steel. And theoretically, this brass is mainly just rusted old brass. So what we're gonna do is take a little bit of a detail brush here. Just in select areas, we're just going to put a little shiny edge highlight there, just in a couple of places, just to make it realize that it had once been metal. Just like so, just a few places just to add one more color to the mix. Finally, we're going to take a little bit of Screaming Skull and we're just going to put a highlight layer over the skulls on the front uh, dozer blade here. like so. Do the same thing on the other three skulls. Like so. So we'll leave that dry and we'll be back here in a few minutes. So now that we're finished with our screaming skull, we're going to do one more little thing. We're going to take a little bit of Reekland Flesh Shade and then we're gonna put just a little bit in all of these pits uh, in the hull. And all that is is going to mimic a little bit of rust as it dries. It'll pool in the bottom of the pit and leave a little bit of stain. just like that so just one more added little depth of color in the 
in the model. We'll finish this, we'll let it dry, and then that should almost be it. Uh, so we'll meet back here in a few minutes afterwards. So this is our final product now that all the painting is done and we've clear coated it. Uh, it's set up here with the heavy slugger and the two plague spurs. Uh, this is pretty much how we normally run it uh, because uh, the plague spurters are um, strength uh, user, which is usually seven. And if we run them with the pox bringer, we're looking at strength eight. Kellic Marines on twos. I hope yours turned out as well as ours did. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. And if you like the way you, this turned out, or if you're happy with it, uh, please feel free to leave a like or leave a comment uh, or even subscribe to the channel because that's a huge help. Uh, otherwise than that, I hope you enjoyed painting here. And um, we'll see you at the next video. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for staying on this long. And you have a pleasant day.